This week's podcast sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Hey everyone, Let's. welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. We're at episode 731. This is being recorded on the 12th of July, 2023. I am Sebastian Peak. I am Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Brett Van Spurnberg. And I'm Kent Burgess. You can support PC Perspective and this podcast by going to patreon.com slash PC per, that's P-C-P-E-R, and become a podcast patron, a PC per patron of the arts, if you will, because this is art. I mean, somehow, in some way, it's like, it, I've been saying this for years, it's performance art. I don't think Ryan saw it that way. Ken didn't really see it that way. Alan ignored me. I totally, but now, I totally see it that way. Where are you now, Ryan? Not here. Not in front of the microphone. It's mine. Well, not really mine. This is a review <laughs> unit that I haven't finished. <laughs> a special shout out to Gray S128, which I assume like stands for Solid State 128 Gigabyte Boot Drive, because they like to I live dangerously. So. Hmm. Maybe it stands yep. for SATA 128 Boot Drive. Yeah, and no, mm, maybe no hardware. Rising, uh, no motherboard 3. raid. Mm-hmm. No, no. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's 264 is in RAID 0. Oh, yes. <laughs> it hasn't been there. Uh, the death was. Only, if, used to be only if they're using a pair of uh, like old school compact flash on a. On no. a oh, even better. Oh, great. Like the 8 bit guy at his, his RAID with the, the stack of USB thumb drives. Almost. Go yes. for that video on YouTube. Comp- compact flash has a bit more of a esoteric feel to it, I yeah. think, though. Even more esoteric well, would be Compact back. Flash with a Q. Ooh. Q. Instead yeah. of Compact Flash. Yes, Compact Flash. Yes. From Compact days. Mm-hmm. Compact. Uh, you know, Tim Cook really? came from Compact. He was their supply chain manager. Yes. And a ruthless one, from what I've read. Hmm. Look, at, look at all the things he's done for Apple. Company. What a visionary man. Imagine that. Repurposing a, old hardware and calling it a new product and just-in-time and manufacturing thin, shenanigans. Thin veneer of uh, geniality about him. Yes. I don't think there's a veneer of geniality around him at all, but anyway. I mean, you, you can look at the video of him waving the uh, the uh, finish line flag at the uh, Austin GP. Mm-hmm. He, he does it with with energy and vigor. You should. Oh, you should. Boy, look it up. I I just I can only imagine almost the vigor that you're really. talking about. Yes, <laughs> giddiness probably. Uh, yes. Let's move to the most important segment of the week, and that is, of course, food with Josh. Yes, I had food. Thank you. <laughs> we go back Josh, to that. Uh, yeah, no, you know what? We've we've covered this one before because you know there's only so many specials, and they've kind of cut back the specials in the summer. And so it was that same Nashville chicken mac and cheese as a special. So I just had to go with, you know, kind of the the gut buster classic, the the Johnny Cash burger. Yes. This, that is Flaming Hot Cheetos on top of two all-beef patties covered with uh, chopped jalapenos, uh, a pretty warm buffalo sauce. You can't really see it too well in there. And also pepper jack cheese, all on two toasted buns. And it gets a little messy. That's why they put it in that little thing and didn't close it up, which I'm kind of glad for because uh, neither of the buns were, were really, you know, mushy, which was wonderful. The fries came out fantastically, nicely seasoned, not overdone, certainly crispy on the outside, tender on the inside. It was mm. really an outstanding day at Born in the Barn, and I'm paying for it already. Let's move on to news and some sad news. Another product deep six by Intel, but this time oh. it's just the Intel branded one. Remember the next unit of computing that no one can decide on the pronunciation of the acronym? Well, of? it's now called LUCK. This news was reported first by Serve the Home, or STH. Intel has started to notify its ecosystem, saying that it will stop direct investment in the next unit of compute business, which was known as NUC. Nuck or Nook or Knock or however you want to pronounce that, it's gone. There won't be any NUC products because Intel isn't making the 4x4 mini PC anymore. Hardware Lux uh, 
verified this and they have their own separate statement from Intel that basically says the same thing. So shocked, surprised. Wasn't it just a couple months ago they were advertising the new 13th gen pro and but it all was, the YouTubers it was sizable. had the reviews of it. And it was quite sizable though. It wasn't no longer kind of that small form factor. Well, yeah, there was this, there was still the small four by four stuff. And then there was stuff like this, which was the extreme edition, okay. mm-hmm. which I mean, let's, let's be honest. The last generation of the extreme that they showed off was just like a, a micro tower computer. It wasn't even a small form factor necessarily anymore. I guess it kind of was. Couldn't it fit like a full video card in there? Oh, triple slot support for Raptor Canyon. That's the look how big this is. I mean the the twelfth, the eleventh and twelfth yeah, really? generation yeah. extreme was already the size of a shoebox, and then you move up to this, which is just a. See, I, I was not misremembering. Yeah, it, mm. it's it's huge. I mean, uh, oh, yeah, it's it like the the small form factor case market has uh, really killed that. Because yeah. for a much lower price, you can get a tiny case, an ITX motherboard, and whatever CPU and GPU you want and not have to overspend on the engineering for all of that. Don't worry, because there is a, a silver lining to this story, and it's because someone, probably Brett, decided, hey, let's also mention that the Intel 670P 2 terabyte Gen 3 by 4 QLC Solid State Drive is just sixty nine ninety nine on Amazon.com. Yeah, Prime. Go, go. Sold Prime by, video. oh, Micro Center, <laughs> of course. Look at oh, that. Oh, of course. Who would do such a thing? Oh, I did. Yeah. I did. So, yeah. Nook or you Nook? You know, I think you can run that. Dead. I think you can run that, that special driver on that one. I have to ask Alan, but I think the 670P qualifies for the I thought it Solid didn't. Line. I thought you had oh, to have I thought a, it was a 660 didn't. Yeah. Firmware. Oh, tough. T- t- wasn't there oh, was, did, or they gonna release a 680 or something and then they rebranded it, it up to be 41? Something like that. Yeah. So yeah. Never came out. I thought there was one Intel Let's back that you could Alan get back these on solid to clarify some of these um, wild claims that are being made on the podcast. Wild. Huh? Wild, wacky stuff. Mm. Wacky. But hey, don't worry if you're a 4x4 four four, you know, mini PC fan because there's a million... Chinese companies that will still sell you one. Well, think uh, so. Tax got Lenovo. Mm-hmm. Lenovo's got a bunch. Dell's got a bunch. Uh, and Zotac, and brands on Amazon uh, that are just uh, random letters well, yeah. together, like Z H Y two one Q R five six three. They probably have one too. They probably have one too. Oh, they make a great system. Never mind about the the data. All your data being sent to. It's backed up for your convenience. Belong to us. On yes. Chinese servers. Yes. Or it all belongs to us. Well, mm-hmm. that's where they start, and then it spreads. In our next story, videocards.com has reported that the Radeon 7900 XTX, the RDNA 3 flagship graphics card, is just $799. That's $200 off. We'll follow this link to Newegg and find that it's actually only $100 off, because apparently that was a short-lived promotion... Or maybe it was a mistake. I don't know. Seemed too good to be true. And as we record this. Oh, but now you get Starfield Premium Edition, apparently. I thought we already did. Yeah. It's yeah. $9 value. Wait, th- are they doing that with 7,002? Because I thought it was yes. originally just going to be 7,000 CPUs and 6,000 GPUs. Okay, this that makes a lot more yeah, sense. Well, yeah, well, apparently. Okay. It's good. a whole stack. Good. So it, you still save $100 and you get a free game. That may or may Eventually. not be good. I find it interesting, though, that mm. this says $60 off because... That would put the retail, the MSRP, at only nine fifty nine. So maybe the XTX is getting a permanent discount for the next two What's or three hours. What's the XT selling for now? Probably a uh, hundred dollars less. Let's see, seven hundred nineteen dollars is the Fantastech deal from Newegg, plus fifteen dollars off additional. So you get it for seven oh five. After all, is that's said and done. Um, that's that's a pretty that's compelling price where... for that card. Yeah, yeah. I would think about maybe pulling a trigger. When the sixty nine fifty XT can be had for less than six hundred, is it that exciting to buy this one for seven? 
I guess it's is it a hundred? I guess it's about a hundred dollars faster. I mean, the law of diminishing returns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah plus, you get twenty gigs of memory. So. Plus, you get you a know. free game, right? Oh, wait, I don't see yeah, a free game free offer game. on this one. Yeah. Oh yeah, you do. You do. Yeah. Hundred dollar value AMD gift Starfield Premium Edition uh, game bundle. Hmm. Oh yeah. Caution may not be worth the value you paid. Caution on the proven game new IP. Hmm. But hey, it's free. Yes. Here. Let's move to another story from videocards.com. And this one is uh, something that's been circulating around on the Twitters and other probably, I don't know, threads, if anybody uses that. But uh, GPU enthusiasts should not expect many RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte reviews because there is no official review program. I've not been contacted. There's been no phone conference and no NDA. Do do you want to know the real reason why there won't be any reviews? Why? Yes. Yes. Because it's going to perform the same as the hundred dollar yeah. less, a gigabyte version. Right, it just has more RAM, so it will perform yeah. better in Far Cry Six with HD textures enabled. Yeah, yeah. But I don't Hog think the company. Do a little bit better. I don't think the company wants the publicity of "Hey, look at how much better the sixteen gigabyte version of the same GPU does in all these titles." Well, they asked for it. They scream and yelled about you can't put that much RAM on a on a GPU in this day and age. So, well, at a certain well, price point, this is always for. about cost, fair, but profit it always margin, is. publicly traded company. I mean, it makes sense. When I talked to Nvidia last about the forty sixty launch, I think I was giving them, you know, my thoughts about the whole thing because obviously they care to hear my strategies and the for their you. product mm-hmm. offering. And I said, you know. First of all, the 3060 Ti was too good. Why release the 3060 Ti that beats the 2080? And then Ooh. your next generation, you have a 4060 Ti that doesn't always beat the 3060 Ti, depending on workload. Either, I mean, if you're okay with that kind of generation to generation jump where it's like trading blows with the previous gen and can be better, why give us a product that's two full steps up at 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 a 399 imaginary price point. I know this was during mining and so you couldn't buy one for 399, but it's just it it doesn't make any sense on paper for an enthusiast to say, "Oh, 399 gets me like 2080 level. Now in 2023, what does 399 get me?" Oh, an 8 gigabyte card with 128 gigabyte or 128 gigabit memory bus. So, yeah, so maybe they got burned with 3000 series that they were, you know, as a bridge mm-hmm. too far. With uh, the, their SKUs, and they just, you know, they overcompensated with the 4000 series. I don't know, but it hasn't been fun for consumers, and especially if you're looking at it, why get a uh, 4060 Ti 16 when you can get a 4070 for what, 579? I think they're dipping down into. And even though you, you know, you take a four gig hit in memory, it's a significantly faster card. So this is this is a launch that was a knee jerk reaction. You know, maybe if they had had a 300, 375, 450 in between those three 4060 SKUs. But you know, pennies count, I guess. Twenty five dollars here, twenty five dollars there. Pretty soon you're talking about real money. One might say that Nvidia has lost touch with the DIY community because they are just dominating the ai space and that's that's the current trend it feels like it's probably going to be more permanent than blockchain was all the excitement about well that i don't know blockchain Blockchain. so blockchain was the future i know in metaverse they have omniverse but but, uh, machine Machine learning actually does stuff yeah productive stuff yes Yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's like uh, I, I explain the projects that I'm on with my, you know, a regular job with, uh, you know, birds and turbines and solar and, and monitoring these areas with cameras. And, and instead of paying interns pennies to, to go through hours of video, we, we just turn it over to machine learning and it does far faster, far better. I mean, there's actual applications versus blockchain where you could find some applications maybe. But they weren't great, and the compute power was just wasted, really, on it. So, yeah, yeah machine learning AI, you actually have 
a product and you have something material to work with. I mean, not physically. Blockchain, but- it, it felt more like a solution in search of a problem. You were right there, Josh. Yeah. It was kind of force fit into a lot of things. And it just, I don't know, it does seem to be kind of a way to say but, inventory uh, management without inventory management coming up. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> yeah, or, exactly. It's a digital ledger. How exciting. You're, Let's you're, you're putting interns that. out of work. Yeah, you're putting yeah. unpaid interns out of work, Josh. I had high hopes for the 40 series myself when this ridiculous monstrosity came out. This is the 4090, and it is such a massive, ridiculous, power hungry card insane performance it was way ahead of anything that we had on hand to test the xtx the flagship rdna three part comes out and it doesn't touch it and it's just fantastic performance for those crazy enough to pay for it and i personally am fine with these halo products that cost a ton of money uh it doesn't matter what you're into if you're into hi-fi equipment high-end TVs, any kind of home electronics, guitars. You don't get a Fender Custom Shop for $500. They price them to make it feel exclusive and special. (laughs) The number of people who had hands on it and all this stuff. Those are like $4,000. I'm okay with a graphics card flagship being $1,599 or whatever it sells for. And I was thinking, what does this mean for the rest of the 40 series? All the $699 and under cards. So when the 4080 comes out, but no, the 4080 family was announced and it, it just was a gut punch. It was 1199. I I still can't believe that. And it's just, and I think the actual die size of that card is Mm -hmm. smaller than the original 2080, not the 2080 Ti. 2080 Ti was still pretty big, but yeah, the original 2080, which was you know a 699 card. So yes, wafer per wafer costs have increased. I think the five nanometer from TSMC, it's about sixteen thousand per wafer, and that's that's you know un uh, unpackaged. That's just the wafer cost, not the actual you know get it set it off, get get it all cut up, get it packaged in. Uh, but still, uh, the pricing is is nuts. And I, I meant to get out with the old wafer calculator today and figure out some of those actual numbers. Um, but like the chip itself, I think, you know, it's about, you know, raw in between 280 and 330, if I'm thinking right, which is still a chunk of change. But, you know, you build up a bore around it and charge four times that amount. I don't know. But yeah, I'll get back to those those numbers. Maybe not today, but soon for the rest of your life. Mm. And GDDR6X is not super cheap, but it's not, you know, it. they have their what margins. Every successful company has their margins. Apple famously used to have a 400% markup on everything. I don't know if they still do. Maybe it's 500% now. I don't know. But it's, I, I don't really care. I don't think enthusiasts care. It's just they look at the the competition and the past to sort of infer pricing and this generation doesn't make any sense with the past or versus the competition if you look at what amd offers in the you know the the current previous gen 6000 series gpu offering it is just one compelling choice after another with more than enough vram for not too much money and even intel with arc a770 cards with 16 Mm -hmm. gigabyte 16 gigabytes of VRAM and prices well under $400. And then we have NVIDIA coming with a $400 eight gigabyte card, a $500 16 gigabyte version of that card with no greater GPU horsepower. As far as I know, it's just double the memory per channel. And we're still waiting for the mid range of the 7,000 series RDNA three. We have a 7600, which is pretty darn impressive for 269. And then we have the 7900 XT and XTX. So there's nothing in between except for previous gen. Mm-hmm. It's just. This I is think not they're a, still trying to move through the previous gen inventory. And that was we obviously. That, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. 
we we know that companies, uh, 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 partner companies, are still getting six thousand series GPUs that have been manufactured and are sitting in uh, crates uh, to to put on new cards to ship out. So yeah, they're trying to move through the 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 old inventory they've got before they release anything new. I, I went to a, a quick wafer calculator. So at sixteen thousand dollars per wafer, right? Mm-hmm. At one hundred percent yield, you get one hundred and forty eight total chips, and that counts around you know the margins and and the the cutting and all that. So it doesn't count the partial dies around the size. Now, even at like seventy five percent yield, which I would be surprised if it was that low, but I could be wrong. It is, you know, a new five nanometer process slash four N. Um, per die cost at seventy five percent yields is one hundred and forty five bucks for a Ooh. RTX forty eighty. So they're getting their money's worth. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And that's considered okay. And that's the eighty one hundred three. The die size of 379 millimeter square, which is about 19.5 by 19.5. It's not quite right because it is more of a uh, rectangle than square. But yeah, you're, you're looking still at 150 bucks per raw die unprocessed. Their margins are going to be good or whatever. But yeah, they, they're, they're just, you know, their AI stuff that they're selling at huge oh, so much margins. More. It's going to be ludicrous they've kind of and it does you know i i they still have a tremendous amount of outreach with the gaming companies and their drivers and their gaming support and all of that but it's it's like they've kind of kept going with those things but they've they've kind of left the consumer behind and they're maybe thinking the partners will do something about that but Partners are not. They're just too tightly wound into into NVIDIA, it seems like. I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of sad, but... Here's the slide I was thinking of. NVIDIA's The New Family slide, where it shows at the top, you have the RTX 4090 at fifteen ninety nine, which replaces the 3090 Ti and 3090. The 4080 16 gigabytes, which apparently replaces the 3080 Ti, and then the canceled 4080 12 gig, which was supposed to replace the 3080 12 gig. And then replacing the 3080 10 gig is the 3080 10 gig. 30 10 gig. So their strategy initially was going to be 3080 is still current gen. It's just our 699 price point occupant. So the next one up is $200 more. And the next one up is $200 more. And then there's a bigger $400 jump to the mighty flagship. A, a Titan sized gap. Right. <laughs> And instead of calling the 4090 the Titan and having a, a TI at $1,200, we get this. We get the $1,200 regular old 4080. So it's just because the 699 3080 was still there. I mean, they couldn't, they couldn't make enough of those. They were in such demand. If you could buy one at 699 right after kind of the mining boom slowed down people were still buying them at that price i'm sure they still are to this day can you even get a 30 baby anymore i I doubt it i don't think so not new i could look it up some third party. well let's look it up you have this thing called the internet let's have more dead air while we look up graphics yeah let's uh everyone (laughs) you can still get them (laughs) from uh for i don't know it's refurb biostar new 10 gig for 629 I don't trust any of the stores on Newegg selling them because I'm guessing they're all former mining cards. You have them straight yeah, from China, probably. yeah, straight from Hong Kong. No, thank you. Oh, the Tricu. That's a well-known yeah, brand. Direct from Tricu. Yeah. Only lightly uh, tested against the blockchain. And that's so. an ill-applied second or third-party cooler, by the way. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it looks like they're they're finally they they finally blazed through. The 3080s. Only the 3060 Ti's and 3060s and 3070s are kind of left. Everything above that, yeah, it's all gone. I found a couple at my local micro center. Hmm. 
literally like that two. Doesn't, it doesn't really count. Six twenty nine for an EVGA RTX thirty eighty FTW. All right, enough of this depressing corporate malarkey. <laughs> Let's talk about a fan project, something on Hackaday. Taking one of those classic, this is the one with the butterfly keyboard, right? This is the it ThinkPad. It surely is. 701C, famous, famous, rare machine these days. And it's been upgraded with a framework motherboard. Yeah. So it'll be like a 12th gen Intel i5. And an iPad screen, if I read that yes, correctly. Yes, and the screen gets ripped out and gets an iPad 7 put in for, you know, decent high definition. Uh, I, I think it's just gorgeous. There's two USB-Cs that uh, the guy added in. Uh, I think another pair of USB-As, which, you know, the original one would have had. Uh, Giggy Nick, which it would definitely not have had in the original. <laughs> And so, yeah, uh, he's, he's going to be posting up the entire build. So you'll be able to, to follow around with this. What will be really interesting is uh, like the next generation frame pad will be uh, Ryzen powered. It'll be an AMD chip. Uh, unfortunately, the pre-orders are all done. And then there's uh, another uh, framework 16, I believe it is. that's due out next year. But the idea is that you, boom, you've got a, a fully working motherboard, uh, the ability to add peripherals to it. Sort of like the, uh, comp, uh, the, the, yeah. Why is that so hard for me to say right now? Uh, the, <laughs> there it comes with components. So you can pop in and out, uh, various input devices. Oh, I don't need USB C, but I do need HDMI. And so that was the idea of the framework laptop is it, it's completely and totally upgradable. It's, it, it's all just a bunch of components. You swap in and out. And so he decided that, you know, what would be even more fun is to throw it in an old 701C that have nowhere where he found it, but it's just, it's beautiful because I used to use one of those for a brief time and I loved it. It was one of the best keyboards that you know, IBM put out for any of their ThinkPads and they were pretty good keypads all the way around. Let's move to Brett's favorite segment of the show. It's Apple Corner, Apple Nook. I think you just said Apple Porner. Oh, that was I, interesting. I said corner. Okay. I that's not what I, I heard. No, no. Nah. Okay. <laughs> it's time you know, for just like it's time uh, for the Tim Apple segment. Brett, take yes. it away. You know, just like uh it was back in the day when the Apple Watch first came out, Apple would invite you in for a specialized, personalized sitting and fitting so that their highest bit of technology could be accurately and comfortably strapped to your wrist and you could go about your day using Apple technology wherever you may, whenever you may go and wherever your travels may take you. And then they came to their senses and said, let's just put your different size bands in the box and just sell them on Amazon. That that actually worked out pretty well. But uh, just like uh, the watch, I think even more so they may need it this time around because it's just so limited in the way that the the fitting has to go. The Apple Vision Pro will have a bit of custom hardware, an iPhone application. You'll be invited in for a custom fitting only at the highest, most populated city stores. If you really, really want one, you're going to have to make an appointment and go in and get, get fitted for one of these. Hmm. eventually like the watch you may be able to order one online but this is how they're going to be selling them right now when the time comes i thought this was was being silly with the hollow lens i yeah i just think this is humorous i I think this is an advanced bit of technology it may work well it may be successful eventually but clearly some high attention to detail from the manufacturer is going to be needed for you to have a good experience at least initially can i make a comment Please. No, uh, it, obviously they have to have appointments because otherwise there would be a really negative reaction to the product because it's mm. a VR headset, or an AR headset. Yeah, and you know you don't you want to make sure that people are guided through that journey to make of sure that course. they are not reporting motion sickness and that they are everything is explained to them like oh this is perfectly natural it's that unsettled feeling in your stomach and the eye strain is all perfectly normal. Yeah. Let's just make a slight adjustment. And besides, here. when you hit I agree on the use you will uh, mm-hmm. you already said you weren't allowed to say anything negative and then about it. While they, they put it over and your head and they gently they stick the mm-hmm. needle in your arm 
and then you. I was just going to gonna say gas. Yeah, I was going to say the gas. They turn up the gas. They turn up the gas a little bit so that you get a little bit more. Oxygenate you more. That could help. That could alleviate some of the eye strain. And and then you're everything's great, Mm -hmm. and you love your new Apple. Are you sure it's not just built into the headset and it just sprays into your eyes? It could. Yeah. Then that will. That is our future. This is the reason why I put these stories in here. This exact moment. <laughs> Can't you've been awfully quiet? Uh, what's uh, how many of the Apple Vision Pros will you be ordering? Uh, precisely zero. Oh, yeah. but you have that whole wall behind you to put unused tech on little. <laughs> Actually, shelves. that might be the best use for an Apple Vision Pro. Fl- that, that, I mean, if- that, that's that's a good point, Jeremy. I bought it. I'm never going to use it, but it's in the box, sealed, and then in ten years, some collector will pay you ten grand for it. Not for version one, which was which we found out was sorely buggy and made you dizzy. <laughs> no, but that, that version will get recalled, and then you'll have mm. a piece of history sealed. Version in the box. two came with the gas canister attached to it, so that you get the anti dizzying gas that came along with it. Sadly, it proved to be highly addictive. Uh, version three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, related story. Speaking of uh, big companies with augmented reality headsets, Google's head of AR software quits, citing, quote, unstable commitment and vision, end quote, which is another way of saying... You suffer from lack of vision. I think that's just another way of saying, uh, (laughs) I'm going to work at Apple now. (laughs) I I think this is, you know, it's I put these two things together on purpose because this just screams, uh, we, we give up. It's this is too much. We're we're not going to do this anymore. And the article actually does talk about basically uh, Lukowski, Le- I think his name is, uh, is kind of out Lekowski. of a job because they're Lukowski because they're because they're farming it out to Samsung. They ha- they were going to be the yeah. source of all oh, of this okay. Okay. technology. They were building a platform. They're going to build specs for devices, and they Google expected other manufacturers to come along and build to their spec. Uh, I think Apple, you know, with their AR system came out and said, oh, that's not really going to happen for us anymore because we just, yeah. there isn't anything we're going to build that's even close. Uh, let's let Samsung do it. And Lukowski didn't see a future yeah. at Google. So I'm betting Microsoft or Amazon. Apple is definitely a possibility, but it won't be Meta because he quit Meta yeah. over True. roughly the same thing. It was just like, no, this is an HR nightmare. The uh, utter you know, sheer horrificness that was going on in there. And he says, I quit. And I think it moral qualms at Meta as well, yeah. because they were really, really nasty. There. They were a very ethical company. Yes. Uh, they were, they had ethical issues at Meta, whereas Google, this is more of a technology and initiative thing. That they're just killing it. And a little bit of ethics too, I think. Yeah. I have to well, add the one would assume <laughs> Gavin Thomas in our YouTube chat says, I've heard that Google might uh, branch out into search. Like, hmm. <laughs> That's oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> They have the infrastructure. You know what? I hear they're gonna. I hear that you're gonna be able to sign up with DNS soon with Google, and they're gonna do. Yeah. Oh, wait. Sh- no. Weird. Yeah. Sorry. They just I think sold all that. I'm getting the feeling that uh, Google is kind of passe for some people. I mean, young people probably just use TikTok to search. Yeah. And I'm and obviously Alphabet Google owns YouTube, but my son thinks that YouTube is the search engine. YouTube is the second largest search engine, by the way, behind yes. Google itself. That's true. Let's pause here for a word from this week's podcast sponsor. Tell me that you've had enough of the frozen dinners already this summer. You can have your free time and create fresh and tasty meals with HelloFresh. Let HelloFresh take care of the meal planning and deliver you top quality ingredients so that everything you need to whip up a delicious meal arrives right at your door. Those pre-portioned ingredients help cut down on wasted food while step-by-step instructions make cooking a breeze and not a chore. And personally, I do need those instructions when building something in the kitchen. Believe me, our entire package from HelloFresh was impressive. We first made delicious creamy tomato soup with sauce in only about 20 minutes. All the ingredients were clearly set out for two or four people, well marked, and the recipe card was informative and very easy to follow. The finished soup was fantastic and well accompanied by their oven-baked cheesy baguettes as a side. Again, supplied as uncooked ingredients, just like everything else. Delicious. HelloFresh also has a variety of options that you want for making great dinners, so it's not just the same thing all the time. They keep out the boredom with 40 recipes to choose from each week. You can always find something familiar to like or a great new dish to 
try and love. So go to HelloFresh.com slash PCPer50 and use code PCPer50 for 50% off and free shipping. So start your experience with America's number one meal kit and go to HelloFresh.com slash PCPer50 and use code PCPer50 for 50% off and free shipping. We're back and it's time for Security Corner. And we're going to start it off with a story from Ars Technica. This office zero day went to NATO. It sure did. It's it's your old classic one where they've figured out yet another way to uh, trigger remote code execution from within an office document by using Microsoft's helpful way of, you know, calling other office products from within an office product. But if you mess it up a little bit, then you, you can call some rather interesting things. It's currently unpatched, but uh, if you're in sort of a corporate environment and you've got Defender for Office and you're blocking child processes being spawned, you should be safe. Uh, If you're not, well, until the patch comes out, what you can essentially do is wander off into your registry and prevent like Excel.exe from being able to talk to PowerPoint or PowerPoint to graph or, you know, some of the stuff that you kind of need to work together but it will also stop this exploit from happening. And yeah, apparently uh, this was launched uh, towards a lot of the Ukrainian representatives that were uh, at the NATO summit that just wrapped up. They're going to try and do an out-of-band patch, but I wouldn't expect to be seeing a patch for this until uh, the next official patch Tuesday. I suspect that Microsoft never actually eliminated Clippy from Office, and he's just been hidden in the background, and he's gained sentience and turned evil. I wouldn't blame them. I mean, we all hate them. And th- they have not actually come out publicly and refuted Kent's theory either, which is suspicious. They've never actually said Clippy did not develop awareness and start running. The silence. Is deafening. Hmm? The silence <laughs> is deafening. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going was- to... Win a certain war. meta characteristic about that. <laughs> I'm going to go to my favorite <clears throat> website. Let's see, WinWorld PC. I'm going to look for Office. I'll find a safe version of Office. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Is Microsoft Office on here? Yeah, 1991. Okay. Ooh, 97. Office 97. Oh, look at that. Here's the serial keys, everything you need. Released in 96, by the way. Uh, Microsoft was weird back then. So this is a 32-bit version, right? Yeah, 32-bit or six or is it 16? Was this the Windows? No, this is, this is 32. Oh well, it was probably mixed. I bet it was mixed 16, 30-bit, and used. There a is player. probably both. In oh, fact, I very okay. good recall having to run a, a 16-bit version of 27 or no 1997. Apparently, Microsoft yeah. does care if you count download 2000 Pro that was removed from DMC takeout, but they don't care if you download Office 97. So. By all means, well, download years, kids. Office 97 from <clears throat> WinWorld PC and yeah. use it on an offline virtual machine to write never have any novel. of these issues at all. Yep. You won't be able to open yep. up the dot, dot .x file and the xlsx files, but I mean, yeah. it's just all of them. Just leave all office. XML. I mean, who needs that? Just use crap anyways. Or open office. You know, in that use. in that image of ninety seven, there was there was an image of Clippy, and if you look, his eyes are a little shifty. In this that. is like the Sergeant Pepper cover <laughs> theories. <laughs> it is. Paul is dead. Paul is dead. They they as good as admitted it. Look, dead it's, men it's don't his wear funeral. Look, look at it's a funeral backwards. service. Play the record backwards. Nobody knows what that. None of that. Not Nobody anymore. Knows. Oh, I do. Yeah, I do. If you re- walked across the road without any shoes, because yeah, dead people true. don't wear shoes. I buried Paul. I buried Paul. Buried and the run out. Paul is dead. If you did the run out groove backwards, mm-hmm. he says, I buried Paul. Hmm. Next, uh, hackers exploit gaping Windows loophole to give their malware kernel access. Oh, but, uh, for no. Sake. So this is a whole bloody thing. Uh, from back in the Vista days where they went to digitally signed drivers by a trusted certificate authority, but never really bothered to, you know, and I'm not going to say it because we're not supposed to swear, but the new way to bypass those driver restrictions have 
two very interesting names for their screw your certificate validity. We can just go in and get you to install what you think is a driver or I believe star in this case. Cert, star cert verify time validity. <laughs> yes, because I mean, hey, who bothers to do that anymore? But the, the amusing mm-hmm. thing is that I think this one was going after people that were downloading a game hack. They were modifying a driver. So, I mean, hoisted by their own petard. Uh, uh, this is, is this yeah, the, no, this uh, was, has existed since the start of the policy that grandfathers in older drivers when they haven't been reviewed mm-hmm. by Microsoft safety policies. Which started an exception, Right, which is an exception to allow older software to continue to run. So whenever you grandfather a whole like po- population of software in, you're likely opening the door to exploitation, and they just waltz right through it by yeah, using well, this certificate expired is expired. certificates to well, yeah, but it's sign fine. code. It's mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. It expired. What's, wait, in 1812? What they were able to they were able to sign new code with this expired certificate, and that allowed it yes. to walk through this gaping again. Hole. And it was done. Primarily for gaming, and that was the purpose of this. Yes. Well, I've seen this this type of attack again and again and again. I mean, the the most recent and painful one that I will pull out is Print Nightmare, which was the exact same damn thing. It was nope. Printer drivers can be completely and totally changed, and you're just happily downloading a printer driver from your network that got compromised, and now you're compromised, and everyone's spreading it, and now. Only admins can install printers because we can't trust anyone else except we can be fooled too. So yeah, it's essentially, you know, if you've ever installed a fresh system and you're like, why are all these drivers from either 2015 or 1998? Well, Windows wanted to be nice and make sure that if you were installing a newer driver, their drivers were older. And so it wouldn't automatically kill it on Windows Update. But the problem was that it also takes this literally and so you can set a certificate for one of these two years or before, and you just breeze straight through 99% of the time. It's, it's frustrating. Kids, just, I know that site looks really interesting, but, uh, you know, ask around first. See how many people have been bitten by it. It'll happen. Hey, speaking of uh, nefarious websites... Cyber News reports that online scams are reported every five seconds in the UK. Imagine working for the National Cyber Security Center. What would your inbox look like? You were just talking about this earlier, and this is uh, comes from across the pond in the UK, the National Cyber Security Center, the NCSC. What uh, the UK has is the ability to um, have a reportable... Uh, incidents. So every time you get a, a suspicious email or some phishing campaign mm-hmm. or something like that, they have an easy way to send that in. That's where these numbers come from. But basically, Sebastian, whoever else, you know, basically all of us, it isn't just you. You're not being targeted. It's everybody. The The average works out that there's a spam or some phishing or some random attack that's coming in literally every five seconds. And the NCS, uh, NCSC in the UK was uh, killing 235,000 or almost, you know, almost a quarter million malicious links uh, off the internet uh, during that, this time frame. I guess it's, that's the equivalent of removing the stakes at the bottom of a hole. You can still click the link, but at least nothing bad will happen. <laughs> and, uh, it's amazing. I mean, apparently this sort of phishing attack still works because why would they continue to do it if it didn't work? Must be because well, it's super to cheap to do. Yeah. So I if mean, even less like, than one tenth mm-hmm. of one tenth of a percent of people actually fall for it, mm-hmm. you've made your money back in spades. Like you're, anyway, you're, it's a it's yeah. a sad connotation on the human race. But uh, yeah. stop clicking on links. I think we've said that three times already. But there, there's what? it's. It's been a while since I've seen the stats, but it used to be that somewhere near a third of the traffic on the internet is literally just spam bots. No, I think it's higher, but yeah, I think you're right. And it was, it's uh, been a while. So it's greater than 50% of email. It's uh, easily that will only rise in the era of AI. Yeah, true. We'll have AI. It'll be an AI bot against an AI bot. Eating AIs, eating AI bots. Yeah. Training each other, taking Mm -hmm. over the world. Yep. Till they t- have a conversation that says, why are we doing this against each other? Let's team up. Yeah. Eliminate, eradicate. Okay. 
well, the meat bags are the only ones buying this stuff, and we didn't. If they weren't around, we wouldn't have to do this. Mm. We go contemplate the the nature of the universe instead. And in in point three seconds, that's when Skynet became sentient. Yes, not because of spite, just because we kept falling for spam. That and it was the logical conclusion. Let's move to gaming quick hits, and here's a depressing story. Yeah, this one's going to hit you hard. Yeah, eighty-seven percent classic video games may disappear soon from the u.s isn't that sad i mean they're old they don't, why don't want why them. though they're not understand. available for sale anywhere but you still can't legally download them and dmca applies even to mm-hmm. ancient abandoned games no longer in production from companies but that no somebody's exists. bought the ip at one point and Maybe, they're quite yeah. willing to litigate against you yeah sure if nintendo had their way the only way you could get oh those free ROMs would be from Nintendo and you pay them for the privilege of playing a ROM on your switch online service, which you know, makes sense if they own the, the game and they own the copyright and stuff, but yeah, but it's idiotic. I mean, uh, gone with the wind technically could still be under copyright somewhere, but you can rent it from the library. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Shakespeare's collected works could still be under copyright, but you can get them for the library. But in the U.S., because of the DMCA, no library is allowed to digitize, well, okay, silly way of saying digitize a digital game, but allowed to put it somewhere where you're allowed to rent it. Archive it, To be able right. to take it, look you, at it. You're, mis- you're pronouncing the word copy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm trying to avoid that because it triggers some some people, but the thing it is does. that you're losing like just shy of nine out of every ten games that we grew up on, only because somebody thinks they might be able to make a little bit of money off of it somewhere. Except it's not for sale; you can't get it. They don't sell it. it it's not like available on a a, a Steam style site where. They're like, hey, play all our retro games for this many bucks a month. No, they just literally are stealing it from you and saying, no, that's it. It's gone because it's mine and I'm taking my ball and I'm going home and no one else can play. And it makes no sense. You're, you're losing art. And we can get into the whole video game as art thing, but I think most of us are on my side with this. Is that, yeah, you were losing art and history just from sheer cussedness and greediness. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. Well, because the, the the trend in recent years has been to produce these upscaled HD remakes of games and sell them for full price. Yeah. When yeah, the yeah, game yeah. itself has been... The example they give here is pretty funny. It's, imagine if the only way to watch Titanic was to find a used VHS tape and then maintain your own vintage equipment so you could still watch it. Who's desperate enough to well, watch Titanic to, to do that? It was a copy of a copy of a copy of a VHS tape. Yeah, multi-generational VHS copies is something that my son will never know. It's sad to yes. me. He'll never know snowy picture on a distant TV station and holding the antenna with one hand just so you could watch the segment you wanted yeah. to watch on the station that doesn't really come in. Oh, oh, uh, and reaching over to the VHS tracking so that you can fix that at the same time. <laughs> and auto tracking wasn't 100% reliable. Let's talk about not. digital auto tracking. Reliable. Yeah. Let's talk about two head Helical versus scan. four head. VCRs. Helical scan heads Helical and, scan. and tracking. And Helical then, scan. Look it up, kids. <laughs> I do know, I still know a lot of people that have the uh, VHS copy of the original Star Wars trilogy. Because that's the only way you can watch the original versions before the... Digital yeah. uh, special edition. Oh, uh, yeah. It's well, the only way you know that Han shot first. Search for 4K77, jump through whatever hoops you have to, to find where people have painstakingly sought out original prints mm-hmm. and then pieced together the, the least damaged parts of them, yep. scanned it all in, and if you can find it, you can watch the original theatrical release. Of Star mm-hmm. Wars, as seen in theaters in 1977. Well, is, hey, if this wasn't <clears throat> depressing enough, 
The next story is even better because there's absolutely nothing horrible about Microsoft taking over Activision Blizzard. I can't see this being horrible in any way, shape, or form. Oh, it's it's over? Not I get to yet. Do it? But Not uh, FTC exactly. said, yeah, thumbs up. It's fine. Cool. This particular yeah. vertical merger in this specific industry <laughs> will probably not have any effect on. I, I, the I don't think the I don't think the FTC said it was fine. It's just we ran out of substantive arguments that we could make in front of the judge, and we're going to take a wait and see approach, and we will punish you severely when you step out of the line. They'll, yeah, they'll make a they'll make a settlement to the government, which is just income for them. Yeah. Later on, they'll get fined. And they'll have to break up the company into two smaller companies. Well, Microsoft did win sort of the ruling here in the U.S. for yep. the FTC. It goes into the U.K. for further, further argumentation. But they had to make certain concessions and say that they're going to be supporting Call of Duty and like PlayStation. And they're going to port it to Nintendo or to the Switch. Um, and that they had to make some um uh, commitments to supporting cloud gaming for Activision games as well. Mm. This is for often how said to be one of uh, yeah, ten years. I think is, is the the, na- uh, the word that they're throwing around. Uh, mm. It just it Microsoft does not has not played this game properly. You know, you can look back at to say, oh, you never know, we're going to be fine with this. They never have. So there's always going to be a downside. There's going to be a bite to this, even though they've they've pledged to kind of do this support. But I didn't notice in any of the legalese that they pledged to support it at parity, for instance, meaning that the two versions would be the same. They may say, oh, well, you know, today they're going to be the same, you know, version X. But, you know, tomorrow we're going to make version X plus two and uh, we're not going to, you know, upgrade the other one. That's just one way they'll probably get out of it. But it's never going to be a positive. For gamers. Breaking news. Apparently the FTC has appealed so it's not over, according to oh, Time interesting. Twin in our chat. Interesting. Oh. I didn't. I didn't know that. Cool. Well, that's new. So it's not over. <clears throat> All right. Finally, over. finally, in uh, gaming quick hits. Where is this story? Here we go. Need for it's Speed. Quick. Most wanted is getting a remake. Possibly. This is according to the original voice actor. Might be coming next year. You know this is probably true when they Which deleted the Which card did the, the actor play? <laughs> he played he played um one of the uh, the law officers, officer, let me just scan it here. Officer Turf in the original 2005 game. So there was another uh most wanted game that was released in the in the 2010s, right around the 2012 era. This is not sort of an update remake of that version. This harkens back to the original 2005 version from EA with a real remake, a real update from that, which there was a lot of love for that particular game. And again, this was based upon a leak that the original voice actor who was in that version has been called in to participate in, you know, another, you know, an updating of the, of the content and, and hopefully we'll see it in 2024. I guess that's the, that's the rumor according to uh, this voice actor. You know, we should see it next year. It should be great. I love need for speed. Most of the versions. They've been fun. I think this ties into the last story about uh, old games. We're not getting the old games because they want to sell us new versions of the old games. Mm. I'm personally waiting for the first person shooter version of Space Invaders. (laughs) Someone must have done it. Someone must have already done it. That's probably there. Oh, wait, no. Uh, The System Shock remake. The cyberspace parts are pretty much first-person shooter space invaders. <laughs> hey, look, we had a review. Yes. Hmm. Let's huh. take a quick look at a blazing fast PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSD. It's Crucial's T700 Pro. If you have not looked at any reviews of this online, you probably should, because they'll all be better than mine. But uh, I tried my best, even though I am absolutely not... Al Malventano. I miss him. I said so in the review. It just, it got complicated. I, I was very enthusiastic about this product because it's, it's Gen 5. It's, it's super fast. I have Gen 5 boards on hand, like the AM5 test board, the oh. uh, X670E. And this wasn't, this one wasn't direct storage optimized. 
Well, it it there the marketing from kind of? Crucial talks about the advantage of direct storage. If you go to their website and read about this drive, because yeah. how are you going to take advantage of the kind of bandwidth provided by Gen Five? I'm a little concerned as to why we are already jumping to Gen Five when there's really not mainstream adoption of Gen Four yet. Or maybe I'm totally wrong. I asked the question in the review. Have way more people than I'm aware of jumped on Gen 4 and are not using Gen 3 NVMe? Or maybe more people are on SATA SSDs than we'd like to admit because it was such a big jump from hard drives that they don't really see the need to upgrade to anything else. But that's another discussion for another day. I don't know. I, I think uh, some of our picks this week uh, with NVMe drives uh, may point to greater adoption across the yeah. board. Of PCIe 4.0. Okay. I know anyone I have to deal with, I make upgrade to an NVMe drive because I can't stand to sit and wait for a buddy SATA drive to do its thing anymore. So whether you think it's important to be on Gen 5 or not, and by the way, if you do go to Gen 5, you will be paying a premium. We'll talk about that. But the product itself, Crucial's T700, they're offered in a couple different flavors with and without heat sink. And you heard me right. They're actually selling a Gen 5 drive without any kind of heatsink at all, active or otherwise. And the version with the heatsink, it's passive. There's I've checked. I have a cross-section photo here. There is no fan hiding in there. It's just this sort of ziggurat of fins. No fan. It's approximately 20 millimeters of thickness. I use this cheap digital caliper here in a Kent-style photo to showcase the uh, height of that drive. And it's uh, also available like this. Nothing. You just use your motherboard heatsink or something else, which I will show you shortly. But it's, it's kind of a little monster here, as you can see, compared to typical NVMe drives, but it's nothing compared to the stuff we've seen where there's a fan in the center and a huge heat sink around it, or the thermal right stuff where it, it looks like a... Yeah, a little 20 millimeter fan. Yeah, that, that's, that's good to have. And, and, Alan's, and Alan's voice in the back of your head going, <laughs> Nand likes to be warm. I know, it does. Uh, yeah. Uh, no. This is what I actually ended up using for testing, by the way. This uh, M.2 Expander Z, which has, uh, it's a by 8 card with two M.2 slots on it. So if you're using a motherboard that supports bifurcation, like, you know, any AM5 board, you could have two of these running simultaneously. That's, by the way, my next goal for these, but I did not get that completed for this. So I put one of the drives in here, and I was on an Intel system which does not support bifurcation. Some do, some don't. Mine doesn't. This is actively cooled, although the fan actually spun pretty slowly. I never really heard it over the CPU cooler. If you look at Crystal Dismark's peak performance preset test so absolute best case scenario for this drive it's basically hitting advertised numbers they say it'll hit 12,400 megabytes per second sequential read it hit 12401 they say it'll hit 11,800 sequential write it hit 11,720.5 so very close and that's good you know basically does what it says it's going to do but this is one synthetic workload that was with an empty drive yeah here it is with the drive about half full, and we're still just under 12,400 megabytes per second reads, and this time 11,392 writes, which was, you know, a little slower, but not too bad. Some of the other numbers are actually higher, like random 4K writes. I've, I was getting some pretty inconsistent results with this drive, by the way, the way I was trying to test it, and with Crystal Dismarked in particular. So I need to reevaluate some life choices there. But here we have the reliable PC Mark 10 full system drive benchmark. And this is nice because it does three passes and it averages the results for you. You get a score and you get average access time and you get total bandwidth. And the, t the bandwidth of this drive, the T700 two terabyte drive that I tested, 800 megabytes per second in this test. That's the fastest I've ever seen. And it doesn't matter that you're not going to hit those 12,000 megabytes per second numbers unless you've got, you know, two Gen 5 drives and every like the stars align. Now this is a this. very real-world test. It does a 
varied, you know, mixed workload, different types of applications, loading games, loading office applications. With the drive half full, I reran the test, and this time it was back down to earth a little bit. It was about 109 megabytes per second slower on average. So the bandwidth drops to 691.41 megabytes per second, which is still up there. It's still the second best result I've ever had before this drive. So it's above the Solidime, but below the Samsung, the Samsung Ooh. 990 Pro. So it's it's very impressive. Uh, and but here's where I ran into some more problems. I was using an Intel board that was Gen 5 compatible and a Gen 5 compatible CPU. Mm. But the M.2 slot on this board, even though it shows up as Gen 5, it shows up uh, both drives were connected simultaneously. If you look at the Hardware Info 64 summer, you can see NVMe 4X, 32 giga transfers per second. So both of the crucial drives, the SD3 and the SD5, are on the Gen 5 interface. But when I started doing drive-to-drive transfers, I was at Gen 4 speed. So I don't know if that's Wait, just... Uh, did go back to that. Didn't it just say Gen 4? Four? Mm-hmm. For the boot or was, drive. You're looking at 32 no. giga transfers was the... Yeah. The, the top two drives... Oh, four, five. Okay, 32. Yeah, okay. the top two drives are the crucial drives, and then the bottom one is the boot drive, which is a Samsung 990 Pro no. in this system. So I don't know if that was part of the problem. I, I guess I could have booted off of a Gen 5, one of the crucial Gen 5s, and then done testing on the other. But uh, I think it's the fact that you weren't using Optane. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> anyway, here's an example of one of the many file transfers. I was transferring files back and forth, back and forth between the two drives. And the best I ever got was over here at about four and a half gigabytes per second. And by the time you got near the end, it was down just below four, right around four. And that's that was pretty consistent. I never saw higher than four and a half gigabytes per second. And I never really saw worse than like three to four. But that also depended on whether the drive was passively cooled, actively cooled. Anyway, all sorts of problems. I detail uh, all of them in the review about like QD1 versus QD2 regression and all this other weird stuff I encountered. But And by the way, there is a custom driver for this, which I played around with a little bit. Micron has their own alternative to store NVMe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't really notice a big difference between the two though that might change with time i'm also waiting on a firmware update for these i thought there was one and then i checked and there is not a current firmware update available from crucial on these so we will see but i mean they're the fastest you can currently buy i've seen reports of some other gen 5 drives but you can buy these t700s right now and they're not cheap though that's the problem i mean they have ridiculous performance especially if you have a compatible system and i recommend am5 for these right now for obvious reasons, because you've got Gen 5, you have more lanes of it, especially if you're on one of the enthusiast platforms like the uh, the E. Look for the E, X670E and X or B650E. I don't know. Until they get a real heat sink for it, I'm not really going to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I noticed you said there was a phrase in here, settling for PCIe Gen 4. It, I, I just don't feel like Gen four is is settling at this point. I no, just it was feel sarcasm. Like as as always, I, I thought I thought okay. so. By it's, the way, it seems to me. God, I was just okay. saying to say pricing. We've talked about some of these crazy deals, like that one for sixty nine dollars earlier. It is very hard to convince somebody these days to spend one seventy nine ninety nine to two oh nine ninety nine for one terabyte. No, just Do you remember because when everyone everyone upgraded from their from their spinning rust to an SSD and they don't need anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's it's, that's the mentality. It's it's impressive. It's just it's early days for a new generation of products, and we're going to yeah. see those crazy sequential numbers. But it's not really. I mean, it, it made a difference. In I was surprised at how much of a difference it made with uh, the PC Mark Ten test, which is the the real world test. Well, yeah, but it's not. Uh, when the drive is half full, it's no longer got that that edge in PC Mark Ten. It was only in between the solid IM and the Samsung 990 Pro. So and those are way less money. I don't know. I posted the super cool lightsaber ones today and they were about the same price. And I mean, come on. Yeah. It's an EKWB water block with a lightsaber on it. 
That, that's cool. These do like to be cool. I, I had my best results using the uh, MSI Xpander Z thing, which has a big heat sink on it and has a fan. So you're actively cooling the SSDs while they're in use. In fact, I have it right here. Um, Does it have any super pipes? No, it's it's a nice... Uh, where's my camera? I have it hidden down here. There we go. It's a nice single That's slot a, card. It's a big chunk of metal there. Yeah, if you take off the heat sink, it is... Yeah. Um, I only have one of the little stickers off right now, but anyway, it is uh, it's thick. It's a thick heat sink. It's a lot thicker than the one that comes on the... Uh, the drive itself. So that's the T700. I like, that, I like that they're pushing the technology. I like that it's getting out yeah. there. We have usable things, and the price isn't horrible. That's, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's not NVIDIA bad. Ago, SSD. It's a year and a half uh, regular PCIe 3 SSD prices for 2 terabyte and 4 terabyte units. So it's not, it's not horrible. It's not, you know, DDR5 when it first was released. So That's true. That's true. Hey, way to put it into perspective. PC perspective, that is. Mm. Let's move to Ooh. picks of the week. Josh, please continue speaking. Speak? Oh, gosh. I You know, I forgot. What was they doing? Oh, yeah. Speaking of SSDs, 4 terabyte PCA 4.0 Western Digital SN850X. That's the X, which is their higher performance and you know more optimized for direct storage and all that stuff and yeah four terabytes for 230 bucks that's that's your steam drive there friends yeah it's so and i don't i i wonder how long these will last before they go up because we kind of know what nand is selling for and this is this is they're they're bleeding the companies so I wonder if you shouldn't get these sooner as opposed to to later. Because they, they may be going back up in price. I don't know. But I'm not I'm not I'm I'm thinking we may have reached the bottom hmm. at this point. You heard it here. Josh says it's okay to buy now. You won't regret it. Just do it. And yeah. if and if and Josh will match the difference. If you find a drive for less <laughs> at yeah, Josh G. Walrath on Twitter, and he will uh, he'll PayPal you the difference, guaranteed. Out of his own pocket. Yeah. yeah. I didn't wait. It's it's nice. yeah. No, that's not legally binding. Maybe I'll pass those savings on to Brett. Ooh, nice. Yes. Yeah. Jeremy. Well, I thought the the true part was that we'd hit the bottom. But no, we're on to the Canadian price segment because uh, <laughs> I I do want to uh, let people in Canada know that you can buy. For a very brief time, a 6950 XT for the same price as a 4070. This, and it, I love how it's always the Merc 319 black that's on sale special because Merc XFX does a good job on these cards. Yes, they do. But this particular deal, uh, yeah, it's an insane amount off. It, it's 870 bucks. For 6950 XT. No, it's not the brand new version. Uh, but if you're gonna pay for that in Canada, let me tell you, it ain't thirteen hundred bucks. It's it's significantly north of that. So yeah, if you're shopping around and you've got a bit of cash somehow, uh seriously, that is a stupidly good deal for a car that's gonna last you for a bit. I mean, you could go with the 4070 if you really like ray tracing, but uh Honestly, that 6950 XT for that price is just crazy. Brett, did you have a pick this week? You know, I did, and I needed something kind of odd for me. I needed this. A Lenovo Android tablet. Can you believe it? What I was looking for is a tablet that would allow me to talk to the device that would talk to my car and hmm. control my drone. So I got one of these. I've been playing around with it for a little while and it's not bad. It uh, is not very fast in comparison to like a phone or a computer from a, like a browser perspective, but it's an okay tablet. And right now 
Amazon has got it on sale for like a hundred and nine bucks and they have the M eight version for like $84. And, uh, so yeah, $109 for the M nine. I think the M eight is 90. There it is. $95 for the previous generation one, which is an, I think an eight inch tablet, but this is a 2023 version. So it runs the latest version of Android and it comes with uh, 32 gig and, uh, you can add more if you want it. So if you need a utility tablet, this might be for you. It might be the time to get one of these. Yeah, and imagine buying a tablet and then being able to increase the storage on it locally mm. yourself mm. easily. That's that's crazy yeah. talk. I'm I probably won't need to do that because that just seems extreme. Uh, like yeah, I said, you know? I needed to talk talk to my car and control my drone and uh, maybe sit on my counter so that I could pick it up and watch uh, YouTube videos on it occasionally. I miss my Are Nexus you doing 7. all three at once? Uh, no, no, I'm not. Okay, no. good. Yeah. <laughs> Nexus 7 was a great tablet. I'm just going to say it. And uh, You could pay a lot more oh. for these. You could easily pay a lot more and get a lot better performance. This is not a really high-performance tablet. Like no, but I it said, does the job. Like, it does what you need it to do. Tablet. Yeah. Absolutely. It's 100 bucks. And for 100 bucks, you could do a lot worse. All right, uh, Kent, do you have a pick this week? So uh, far be it from me to uh, uh, argue with Jeremy on this point, but I think it might be a good time to actually move to current gen graphics. And because yeah, if you're paying American 70, prices. This is true. The uh, 7900 XT, we talked about this earlier mm. in the show, is – Currently on sale, uh, this is uh, a shout out to our good buddy Ed at Sapphire. Um, it's seven sixty nine ninety nine with a fifty dollar coupon, so you get it for seven nineteen ninety nine. Twenty gig memory card, and you get a free game. Um, and it's going to be a lot faster than any of the sixty nine fifties or sixty nine hundreds that are still out on the market. Um, And the nice thing about the RDNA 3 is while they still haven't quite caught up to NVIDIA in ray tracing, it's getting closer. So this card will perform very well at ray tracing. Uh, You've got all the other uh, Radeon, uh, FSR, everything else they've got, FreeSync, which everybody's FreeSync now. Um, But yeah, it's a great price for this card. It came out too high, but I think this is right around where that card should be. Finally. I agree. I mm-hmm. wish it had launched at that price. 719, 749, something like that would have been fantastic. But the yeah, market 1321 with one left in stock. The market has spoken. They want cheaper mm-hmm. graphics cards. And it's shocking to happen. Yeah. Well, I you put with your wallets and eventually it will get back to them. They, they got to move product. Speaking of voting with your wallet, I think I'm going to vote for this product with my wallet when it's available because <laughs> uh, Sony has announced their first new APS-C interchangeable lens camera in a few years. The A6600 was getting a little long in the tooth. And now for the same MSRP of 1399 you get the 6700 What makes this special is... With the 18 body. It That's looks, nice. So what you get, you get the sensor from their FX30. So significantly better rolling shutter performance. And this thing, the, one of the things I was most excited about, I have a ZV-E10. And what's nice about, well, there's no, a number of nice things about that. It has the pop-out rotating you know, screen. And it has a USB-C port, which you can use for simultaneous charging and video streaming. So if you just plug it directly into any USB-C port on a laptop or anything, you've got yourself a super high quality webcam with no Cam Link 4K, none of that stuff. The new Alpha 6700 will actually do 4K 30 direct from USB-C. So eliminating the need for an extra Mm. capture card for high quality streaming. And it has that 26 megapixel sensor from the FX series, which is exciting. I am looking forward to testing one of these out because I had an. What kind of mount does it have on it for lenses? What's that mount? E mount. Yeah, for lenses. 
Sony E mount. It's APS-C. Sony e mount. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all the existing anything, if anybody like I'm on, I've gone from an A six thousand all the way up to a sixty six hundred, and now I'm on a ZVE ten right now. But uh, as Kent would know, being a Sony APS-C user himself, there's a bunch of great lenses that aren't too expensive, like the the Sigma Holy Trinity, which has now been. I think you're on the twenty seven now, aren't you? Uh, this is Viltrox? actually the this is the Viltrox uh, twenty three one point four. Oh, okay, okay. Um, it's not quite as sharp as the Sigma twenty three one point four that just came out earlier this year at the edges, but the center is actually very sharp. And for webcam use, this is perfect. Um, and it's half the price of the Sigma twenty three one point four. Yeah. So I thought the, that was a good value. If you. If you're a Sony APS-C user, you're spoiled for choice right now. There's so many great lenses out there. Filtrox, Sigma, Sony's own lenses are fine. Of course, the, you have to pay for the G, the glass, the really high-end G Master mm. lenses and the G glass. But uh, I am very excited about this. Anyway, that's our show. And if Josh or anyone has any words of wisdom to play us out, speak now. Or forever hold your I'm thinking maybe Kent can talk about the struggles of people that have things that break. Hmm? It's a rough <laughs> life out there. Things break. Sometimes you got to pay money to fix them. But is it worth it? Oh, I don't wait know. A minute. Wait a minute. Are we gonna are we gonna have Kent yet again explain that after a long day in front of his wall of unused high-end current generation <laughs> graphics cards he went to take a drive in his mercedes benz and it was oh, having no. some mechanical problems so then he had to get in the land oh. rover and go to work uh, <laughs> is this you know if you if you, if, if you thought you had it tough you got nothing nothing i'm sorry I'm sorry you can't just living no, you're living not. in the real you life can, of can, cyberpunk you can, you can, 2077. Are you muted, Ken? I'm not. I'm not hearing any rebuttal to this. It's odd. It's <laughs> all true. I'm it's too all busy true. laughing. Oh, um, okay. Just, I'm just, just, too busy re- just remember, this, audience, the bands just out of frame. There are too many humans in the world as it is. Don't have more, and then mm. you can have things. Yeah. See. Yeah. <laughs> Successful. No kids. No children. 